you probably know that SSDs and traditional spindle hard drives are different in many ways, including the speed, sturdiness, and cost. But did you know that SSDs have different interfaces, most commonly SATA and PCIe, which will determine the speed of which you can access the underlying SSD? In this video, we will look at some tips and tricks for faster imaging of SSD drives that utilize the NVMe protocol over the PCIe interface. Much like the traditional spindle hard drives that have different interfaces like IDE, SATA, and SCSI, which will vary in performance, SSDs also have different interfaces like SATA, NVMe, and SAS that can have a huge effect on performance. Let's take a look at our first demonstration. I'm going to connect a spindle hard drive to my imaging workstation, which is running the Paladin software from Sumori. I'm going to bring up two terminal windows to show you the imaging process using the command line. The first thing to do is just type ls block to see the devices we have. And so here we see SDA, which is my internal uh, SSD. And then we see SDB, which is my thumb drive uh, for Paladin. And then we have SDC, which is the one terabyte external spindle hard drive. Now I'm going to double check that SDC is in fact the spindle hard drive by using the hdparm command. I'm going to do sudo hdparm dash capital I slash dev slash SDC, and then just pipe out the head to get the first couple of lines. And the command comes back to tell us that it is a Western digital model of WD10JPLX, which is in fact the spindle hard drive. So now let's go ahead and image the drive using the DC3DD program. I'm going to do sudo DC3DD if equals slash dev slash SDC. And the input is going to be our hard drive, which is slash dev SDC, of equals slash dev slash null. The output, I'm going to dump it out to slash dev slash null for this demo as I just want to show how fast we can read. And we can worry about the output limitations in another discussion. So again, for demo purposes, I'm going to specify a count of 60 million blocks to be read. This equates to 30 gigs of data, which is enough to show the trend and uh, it won't take me forever to make this video. So this is going to take a little while, so I'm going to speed up the video. But as you can see here, when we're done, we can see that it took about 229 seconds to complete at an average speed of about 134 megabytes a second, which is pretty typical speed for a spindle hard drive. Next, what I'm going to do is read another 30 gig but this time from the point of about halfway through the disk. So the command is going to be the same as before with the input of slash dev slash SDC and output to dev null and also a count of 60 meg. But this time I'm adding the I skip option and I'm going to skip uh, 976, 762, 584 sectors, which is about halfway into the drive. And this time it took about 273 seconds to read the 30 gigs of data at an average rate of 112 megabytes a second. So the drive read slower. This sort of makes sense if we look at the physics of the rotating disk on a spindle hard drive, right? If a disk platter are rotating at a constant speed, we get more data from the outside areas of the disk than from the inside portions. And because data is written from the outside first and then moves in, it is natural that reading the data at the end of the drive, right, that's on the inside of the drive, it's going to be slower. All right, so now let's take a look at what happens when I try to read two different parts of the drive at the same time. So the top window, I'm going to hit the up arrow to repeat reading from the beginning of the drive. In the bottom window, I'm going to repeat reading from the back half of the drive. I'm going to hit return in these windows one after the other to get them going at the same time. Uh, technically, I could write a script to have them go in parallel, but then it's harder for you to see what's going on. Um, this is close enough for a uh, demo purpose. And once again, I want to speed this up because this is going to take a while. When we're finally done, 
we see that it took the longer process 636 seconds to complete and they both average around 48 to 49 megabytes a second so essentially it took over twice as long to read the same amount of data and once again this makes sense right as the armature that needs to position the read head need to go to different locations and if you're having reads at the same time, essentially we're making unnecessary movements uh, to go back and forth, back and forth to different parts of this drive, thereby taking more time than if we just did it, uh, just one read at a time. Now let's switch gears and look at doing the same reading test to an internal SSD, which is connected to the SATA bus. Let's first use LS block to see what devices we have. So here we see uh, SDA, which is my internal SSD. And once again, I'm gonna double check that by using the HDPARM to make sure we are looking at an SSD. So I'm gonna do sudo HDPARM dash capital I slash dev slash SDA and pipe it to head. So here we can see our confirmation that we're looking at a Samsung SSD and it's the M.2 form factor and it's 250 gigs in size. So now let's go ahead and image that SSD. I'm gonna type the same DC3DD command as before when we're doing it for the hard drive, except I'm gonna use SDA instead of SDC. So sudo DC3DD, if equals slash dev slash SDA, of equals slash dev slash null, count is 60M. And the SATA SSD took 113 seconds at an average rate of 272 megabytes per second. And once again, this falls into the expected range of SATA SSD speeds, which should run between 200 megs a second to 550 megabytes per second. Next, in the bottom window, I'm going to read another 30 gigs, but this time from halfway through the disk. The command will be the same as before with the input of slash dev slash SDA and output going to dev null and a count of 60 meg. But this time I'm gonna add the I skip option to skip 250-509-096. And this time it took 117 seconds to read that 30 gigs of data from the halfway point of the drive at an average rate of 263 megabytes a second. So the rates are pretty close, although I expected them to be uh, the same um, as we don't have the problem of having to reposition the read heads like in the case of the spindle hard drives, but that, that's close enough. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to imaging both the first half and the second half of the drive at the same time. Once again, I have the top window uh, ready to read from the beginning of the drive and the bottom window ready to read from the midpoint of the SSD. And when they're both done, we see that it took about 172 to 173 seconds in both those windows. And the average speed is the same at 178 megabytes a second. So the average speed here is a little slower than um, the full speed read, but it's more than half. All right, so um, it's not like if we read from two different places, it splits the traffic in half. So what this shows you is that if you want to image an SSD in a shorter amount of time, you can actually start off two parallel streams reading from different parts of that drive and still faster than if you read the drive in one single pass. All right, now let's take a look at the most interesting one of them all, which is the NVMe. Let's go ahead and first use LS block to see what devices we have. So here we see slash dev slash NVMe 0 N1, which is my onboard one terabyte NVMe. Uh, one thing to note is that I actually switched hardware, right? So before I had the internal SSD on the SATA interface, and now I have an internal SSD that is on the NVMe interface. Okay, so let's go ahead and image that NVMe drive. I'm typing the same DC3DD command as before, except I'm, I'm using uh, NVMe 0N1 instead of SD whatever. All right, so sudo DC3DD if equals slash dev slash NVMe 0N1 
of equals slash dev slash null count of 60 million. And holy smoke, that was fast. The NVMe took 51 seconds at a rate of 606 megabytes per second. So that's actually not as fast as I thought because NVMe's are theoretically five times faster than uh, SATA SSDs, but I only got twice the speed. But we're gonna go ahead and press on. In the top window, I'm gonna read another 30 gigs, but this time from halfway through the disk. The command will be the same as before, but I'm gonna add the I skip option and I'm gonna skip uh, one billion sectors, which is about halfway through the drive. This time it took 25 seconds to read that 30 gigs of data at an average rate of 1.2 gigs a second. Now that's the speed I was expecting. So I'm not sure why it's faster to read the back half of the drive. Um, so let's try reading from the beginning again. And looks like I end up with the same results as before, which is only at about 600 something megs a second. So let's try skipping just 100 million sectors instead of 1 billion sectors in. And now the rate has slowed down. So it seems like maybe the reads are faster when they're reading the empty parts of the drive. I'm not sure why that is. If I read 200 sectors in, we're now back up to the fast speeds. So maybe there is something to the fact that uh, reading zeros comes back much, much quicker. But let's move on to imaging both the first half and the second half of the drive at the same time. So I have the top window ready to read from the midpoint of the drive, and then the bottom window reading from the beginning of the drive. And the reads took about 27 and 32 seconds, and the average speed was 1.1 gigs per second and 959 megs a second. So basically this tells me that there is practically no slowdown when reading from two different parts of an NVMe disk. So I can definitely feel more confident that I can read in parallel from the NVMe versus the SATA-based SSDs. So what we saw in this video is that you should never read from different locations of a spindle hard drive at the same time. Right, this includes trying to copy files uh, in parallel. You end up just slowing everything down and possibly risk uh, necessarily wearing out the drive, right? Because it has to move that drive head back and forth, back and forth if your data is in different locations. So that's why like in Windows, when you drag and drop files and folders, you should just select them all and do it at, at the same time because Windows will figure out how to optimize that versus if you do it in multiple instances, it is inefficient for the hard drive to keep up with that uh, request. With a SSD connected to the SATA bus, you can try to read from different locations in parallel and you will incur some slowdown, but still faster than reading from those locations one after the other. With the NVMe protocol, you can absolutely do parallel reads without recurring practically any penalty. Right? This is because the 64,000 queues that are available in the NVMe protocol as opposed to the single queue that's available on the SATA protocol. So how many parallel reads can you do uh, at once in practice? Well, leave a comment below to let me know that you're interested in that topic and we can explore it in a future video if there is enough interest. For more videos on Linux tips and tricks, make sure you watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.